Hey guys, Scott here with a video that is really not necessary, but it's become sort of an annoyance to me, so I feel the need to make it. Here is how you can, with math and logic and facts and all that good stuff, prove that people are not deranking off stream. This is geared toward content creators because they're the only way that you can actually see proof of it because you can see their screens and all that stuff. Um, because, you know, if any content creator for this game, you, you've been accused of smurfing at some point. I, I know you have. It's incredibly annoying. Um, and it's mostly just copium from people that are just worse at the game and they just need some explanation as to how they can't be winning the matches that you are. The only explanation is that you're going against worse players, right? So it's sort of a sad thing that I even need to make this video. But here, I'm going to show you with just math, no conjecture or opinions, how you can completely eliminate the possibility that any given content creator, at least that streams and has evidence of them making content, um, is, is deranking. So, the main component to this is iridescent shards. Now, the reason we use iridescent shards uh, as the basis for all this is because you can't not get iridescent shards. If you enter into any match, you're contributing to getting iridescent shards. So, they're a good indicator of whether or not you are playing when you're not streaming. So, the first thing that you do is look at a particular piece of content from a content creator one day, and then go to the next day and compare the iridescent shards. Look at the amount that they had at the end of the first stream, and then go compare their shards to the beginning of their next stream. Those numbers should be the same. Okay, so here's what I mean with comparing, it's loose hands, comparing the uh, shards from the end of their last stream to the beginning of their next one. So let's go to the end of his last stream right here. We're gonna go to the end of his stream, and we're gonna find him in the main menu, and we're gonna look at his iridescent shards and count them. So right now he has 528,000, 395. So now we're going to go to his next stream the next day and look at the beginning of that stream, which is this one right here. And we're going to see if that number is the same. 528,395. It's the exact same number, which means that there's a not enough games were played to have any meaningful impact in between there. So if the iridescent shards are the same, it indicates there was not any gameplay off stream or very little off stream. And we can use that knowledge now to determine it's impossible for them to have been deranking if those numbers are the same. And the way we do that is with player level. Now, player level is something that is the, it's the thing that gives you the iridescent shards. And player level increases from experience. And experience is gotten by just existing in a match of DBD. You get small bonuses for getting emblems, but we're going to assume the worst here. And I'm going to say that a lot in this video, by the way, to play devil's advocate for a very stupid topic. But let's assume the worst and they're just entering into matches and just straight up AFKing. They're not even farming and being a nice killer. They're just picking Wraith and AFKing in a corner for X many games to get their MMR lower and to D rank. So they're not going to gain any of these, but the vast majority of actual experience points you get in a match to affect your player level is just by being in the match. You get one XP a second. So if you're in a match for 10 minutes, for example, you're going to get 600 XP. But let's, again, assume the worst. Let's assume they're not in a match for 10 minutes. They're just sitting in a corner. So the gens are not going to take 10 minutes to do. They're probably going to take like four minutes to do if there's no, you know, uh, there's no resistance of any kind so gens take four minutes then you know they run around and then open the gates there's usually about a minute of poking around to see what the fuck is this killer doing the entire game and then we'll just assume that everyone's out of the lobby within six minutes that's a very you know conservative amount because anytime i see someone afk people are always poking them taking pictures the games go on longer than you think they would but let's just pick six minutes as a baseline average for the worst case scenario of someone not even farming, they're just straight up AFKing in a corner for however many games they decide to derank. That means they're getting, on average, 360 experience points per level, or per, per match, right? Now, if we go down to this table here, we can see how many points it takes to level up. Now, remember, when you level up, you gain iridescent shards, that value changes, and now it's an indicator that you've been playing off stream, right? So let's look at the actual values here. Again, let's assume the worst. Let's assume the killer is from level 50 to 99, which makes it take the most possible experience to level up. So it takes 4,200 experience. And if we're gaining 360 to 400, it's going to take, you know, 10, 11, 12 games in order for you to get to the next level. So again, let's assume the absolute worst and assume the killer content creator or whatever, they perfectly time the end of their stream with them getting to the next level so they can do the maximum amount of games 10 to 11 to 12 to not change their iridescent charge and not change their level let's assume the absolute worst there as well 
So that means they'd be able to get, like I said, 10 to 12 games of DBD in without their level changing, which would give them shards, which would tip you off that they're playing off stream, right? So they mathematically calculated all this like a mastermind for some reason, and they decided to do all of this just to deceive people. Okay, so let's assume that. Let's assume they're doing that. They're losing, let's let's go the maximum, the 12. They're losing 12 games off stream before they go back into their next uh, their next game. Well, now we need to look at how MMR works. And this doesn't really help the argument either, because the most you can gain or lose in a match is 20 MMR. And this is assuming the absolute extremes of everything. That is, you are a very good killer and you go against worse players and you get a 0k. That would be you losing 20. Or if you're a very bad killer and you go against people that are much higher MMR than you, you would gain 20. Those are the extreme examples. But again, let's just assume the worst and every single deranked match was because the the killer was uh, significantly better than the survivors that they were going against, and so they're going to lose the, the like maximum amount of 20 every single match. So let's say the 12, so they're losing 240 MMR over those 12 matches before their iridescent shards will show proof that they're playing off stream. So that's the max you can really lose, 240 MMR. And now we need to go into the obvious. Most content creators in this game, on stream at least, are winning most of their matches. This is not an opinion, just go pick any killer content creator, for example, and just go look at their matches. They're winning most of the time, likely 90 to 100% of their matches. But again, let's assume the worst. Let's assume they had a really bad day and they lost one in four games, which is not very common for, you know, notable content creators. But let's assume they, uh, they only won 75% of their matches, okay? So now we need to figure out how many matches are played per stream. Now, I stream like four hours a day, and I'm on the lower end of stream durations for DVD streams. That's actually not that much. So again, let's assume the lower and go for four hours. Now, how many games would I play in four hours? Seven to 12 minutes a game, roughly two minutes of downtime in between, a minute of whatever, just talking to chat. So let's assume 15 minutes per game. So four, I, I'm doing basically four matches per hour. It's it's usually more than that, but let's just assume it's it's four matches per hour, right? So in four matches per hour, that would be for four hours. That would be I'm winning 12 out of 16 games on a bad day of 75% win rate, right? So that would mean I'm gaining 240 MMR. If we're again using the extremes, I'm gaining 240 MMR there, and then I'd be losing 80 from the four losses. So it would be a net gain of 160 MMR, right? So the thing is, I would need to play at bare minimum eight games where I lose the maximum amount to simply offset the previous stream of winning. That's just the bare minimum to, to offset it, not even to lower my MMR. Now, I would only have three possible games or like two or three games where I actually was able to have lower MMR than what I had previously before that. Now, obviously, that's not that much, but let's also go over what content creators MMR would be. Likely for most of them, it's quite high, unless you're like a solo queue survivor content creator, which you don't need smurfing to make your MMR low because it doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna lose a lot. But for the most part, every content creator that plays this game is gonna have high MMR. If they're winning most of their matches, they can't not have high MMR. That's just how MMR works. If you're winning more than you're losing, your MMR is increasing most of the time. It could possibly stay neutral but it can never go lower. The point is, it's always going up. If you if you know know how MR systems work, it's always going up. So it stands to reason that most content creators would be at or near the cap, which is I believe twenty one hundred MMR. That is the absolute hard cap. You cannot go past that at all. It is the absolute maximum. Now sixteen hundred is the soft cap, and it's called the soft cap because once you hit sixteen hundred, you can match with anyone above you infinitely. I guess not infinitely. Twenty one hundred is the cap, and that might as well be infinitely because you can't get higher than that. So once you hit 1600 MMR, you're at the soft cap, which means you can just go against anyone else above you. Now, let's assume most content creators are probably around like 2000 or something. If they're winning most of their games, they're going to just keep gaining MMR. But let's again, assume the worst. Let's assume they had like a bad couple of days and they're at like 1800 or something like that. They, they got a lot lower than they normally are, for example. Let's assume they also just, you know, derank 10 games off stream and lose 200 MMR. They're still at the fucking soft cap. 
So they would still be going against the same people, even if they lost all those matches, they could without changing their iridescent shard value. They would still be fighting the same people. And even if it was a little bit more than that, it would only give them like one or two games before they were back at the soft cap again. And this is assuming, again, the worst case scenario, worst case scenario, worst case scenario, worst case scenario. The point is, you physically cannot play enough matches to lower your MMR to get into any meaningful smurf levels without your iridescent shards changing because your player level would simply change by playing that much Dead by Daylight. You can't fake that. It's impossible because you get experience and therefore iridescent shards by just simply existing in the game. You don't even have to do anything. You can just stand still. You cannot possibly lose enough matches to make your MMR tank into smurf territory because it is going to be offset by you winning against these people the next day. And unless the person is just losing all their matches on stream, well, then no one's going to think they're smurfing, so this doesn't even apply to you. So this is my whole point. You physically cannot do it. It, it just doesn't work. I'm even going to go a step further for conspiracy theorists. What if they purchase things from the store, the cosmetic store, with shards? No, not really. That doesn't work either, because the cheapest cosmetic is 900 iridescent shards. And at the highest level, I believe you gain 300 iridescent shards per level up. That means... You would have to get through three full levels in order to gain enough shards to buy one cosmetic, which would take basically the entire day, which means you can't also be streaming the entire day and then somehow also derank the entire day. You just wouldn't sleep. It just, it, it's impossible. So there, there is mathematical proof that anyone that you're looking at, as long as their shards don't change, they cannot possibly be deranking. But let's even go further for conspiracy theorists. What if someone did actually have a slight variation in their iridescent shards from the beginning of their stream to the uh, or end of the stream to the beginning of the next stream. What if that happens, right? Well, you need to use your brain, use some context. If they are a content creator that makes YouTube videos, go look on their YouTube channel. Maybe check their uploads. If you see in their upload that it's the value that it used to be, and then they played a match for a, you know, uh, a video or something like that, then they might have been at, you know, 99% to level up. They played their match, and then they got to the next one. But even, even then, they would still have to play so many matches to derank to any meaningful point that they would likely just level up again. So, it, it doesn't matter. Unless they literally have, like, 900 more iridescent shards than they did previously, you do not have enough time. You, you can't possibly mathematically derank enough to a Smurf MMR it's just, it's impossible. You can't do it. So, shut the fuck up.